The Unkillable Soldier Intro The Battle of the Somme, 2 and 3 July 1916 The British Army have attacked and taken the village of La Boiselle. However, the Germans fiercely counterattack and three British battalion commanders fall, leaving Lieutenant Colonel Adrien Coton de Villa as the sole commander in the village. Quickly, this man with just one eye and one hand took charge of all the units fighting in La Boiselle. Leading from the front, Coton de Villa dashed from position to position and was seen by his men pulling the pins of hand grenades out with his teeth and hurling them at the enemy with his one good arm. Despite the most intense fighting, de Villa and his men were ultimately successful in holding the Germans off, thus securing the village. For his actions that day, the 36 years old de Villa, who was not even British, would be awarded the Victoria Cross. Cotton de Villa took part in the Boer War, World War I and World War II. During this extensive service, he was shot in the face, losing his left eye, and took a bullet to the back of his skull. In World War I, he was badly wounded eight times and mentioned in dispatches six times. His reputation for surviving, despite all the many wounds incurred in service, as well as two plane crashes, would eventually earn him the nickname of the Unkillable Soldier. He was one of the most battle-scarred soldiers in the history of the British Army, but the Lieutenant Colonel would only say that, quote, Frankly, I enjoyed the war. Beginnings Adrien Paul Gislain Coton de Villa was born into an aristocratic family in Brussels on 5 May 1880. There was a belief at the time that he was actually the illegitimate son of King Leopold II of Belgium, but this story cannot be confirmed. In 1891 he was sent to boarding school in England, and from there he went to Balliol College, Oxford, but left to join the British Army at the time of the Second Boer War, around 1899. As he was under military age, was not a British subject and didn't have his father's consent, he pretended to be 25 and signed up anyway. His real age was no more than 19. He later wrote about this in his memoir, Happy Odyssey, 1950, quote, At that moment I knew once and for all that war was in my blood. If the British didn't fancy me, I would offer myself to the Boers. He was shot in the stomach and groin during the Boer War. Injuries that would have finished most other men, and was sent home to England to recuperate. Although eager to serve again, he had to wait more than a decade to experience further frontline action. An elegant pirate. When the First World War began in November 1914, Caton de Villa, now a naturalised British subject, was serving with the Somaliland Camel Corps, fighting against the followers of Dervish leader Mohammed bin Abdullah, called the Mad Mullah by the British. It was during an attack on an enemy fort at Shimba Beris that he was shot in the arm and twice in the face, losing his left eye and part of his ear. He received the Distinguished Service Order for this action. Speaking in 1964, Lord Ismi, who served alongside Katan de Villa in Somaliland, described the incident thus, quote, He didn't check his stride, but I think the bullet stung him up as his language was awful. The doctor could do nothing for his eye, but we had to keep him with us. He must have been in agony. While recuperating from these injuries, Cartan de Villa received a glass eye. It caused him such discomfort that he allegedly threw it from a taxi and instead acquired a black eye patch, giving him his iconic look, as recorded in the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. Quote, With his black eye patch and empty sleeve, Cartan de Villa looked like an elegant pirate and became a figure of legend. Caton de Villa was impatient to see more action, and his wishes were soon granted when he was dispatched to Ypres on the Western Front in May 1915. During the Second Battle of Ypres, Caton de Villa was caught in a German artillery barrage and his left hand was shattered. According to Happy Odyssey, the surgeon he was sent to for treatment refused to amputate his two mangled fingers, and so he tore them off himself. His entire hand was removed in an operation later in 1915. By 1916, Caton de Villa had recovered and again had to go up before a medical board, and, 
despite only having the one eye and hand, attempt to persuade them that he was fit for service. Amazingly, he was passed down in 1916 as a Lieutenant Colonel in the 4th Dragoon Guards, Royal Irish, was duly attached to the Gloucestershire Regiment as Commanding Officer of the 8th Battalion. The Legend Gaton de Villa proved to be a fiery inspiration to his men. The pirate's eye patch, arm in sleeve and his handlebar moustache, together with his indomitable spirit, made him a legend in the regiment. It was said that his presence in the trenches, as his men prepared to go over the top, inspired everyone. As relayed in the introduction to this presentation, the battle for the key village of La Boisselle was hanging in the balance when Catan de Villa stepped up to take command. With all three of the other battalion commanders killed in the desperate seesaw battle, Caton de Villa led from the front, smashing all German counterattacks and ultimately holding the village. Though receiving the Victoria Cross, the highest British military award for gallantry, for his actions at La Boiselle, he did not like to talk about it, going so far as not even writing about it in his autobiography, later confessing to a friend that, quote, it had been won by the 8th Gloucesters, for every man has done as much as I have. He was injured several more times during World War I, in particular being shot in the back of the head during another Somme offensive, and again after treatment and rest, lived to tell the tale. He ended the war with the rank of Brigadier General. Fighting the Bolsheviks At the end of the war, Caton de Villa was sent to Poland as second in command of the British Poland military mission under General Louis Botha. Though after a short time, Caton de Villa would replace Botha as head. Poland desperately needed support as it was engaged in several conflicts with its neighbours, most particularly with Bolshevik Russia in the Polish-Soviet War and the Ukrainians in the Polish-Ukrainian War. One of his first tasks was to attempt to make peace between the Poles and the Ukrainian nationalists under Simon Petyura. The Ukrainians were besieging the city of Lvov. The discussions were unsuccessful. From there, he went on to Paris to report on Polish conditions to the British Prime Minister David Lloyd George and to General Sir Henry Wilson. Lloyd George was not sympathetic to Poland and, much to Caton de Villa's annoyance, Britain sent next to no military supplies. He returned to Poland and got involved in several battles and skirmishes, most notably against the Bolsheviks who were by now at the gates of Warsaw. One August day, 1920, whilst on an observation train near the front, he was attacked by a group of Red Army cavalry, a detachment belonging to Semyon Budioni's 1st Cavalry Army. Gaton de Villa joined in the fight to repel them, using his revolver, at one point falling on the track, but fortunately managing to pull himself back onto the train before it sped away. Dueling Incident Interestingly, Gaton de Villa was involved in a duelling incident whilst in Warsaw, acting as a second in a duel between Polish members of the Myslivski Club, the other second being Baron Karl Gustav Emil Mannerheim, later commander-in-chief of Finnish armies in World War II and president of Finland. When the Poles won the war, the British military mission ended. Gaton de Villa officially retired from the army on 19 December 1923 with the honorary rank of Major General. Gotton de Villa stayed in Poland as a civilian until 1939 and the outbreak of World War II. World War II At the outbreak of war, Gotton de Villa signed up once more, seeing action in Norway in 1940 and was for a short period stationed in Northern Ireland. In April 1941, he was sent to Yugoslavia to form a British military mission. However, his aircraft was shot down over the Mediterranean after making it out of the sinking aircraft, despite his disabilities, and swimming to shore, he was swiftly captured by the Italians. He was restless as a pure debut and made several attempts to escape, on one occasion wandering free for eight days, despite being in his early sixties, his rather unique appearance and limited Italian language skills. Two years later, he was released and then sent to China by Winston Churchill to be his personal representative to nationalist leader Chiang Kai-shek, a post he held until 1946. Churchill was a long-time fan of Catan de Villa, describing him as a model of chivalry and honour. He even wrote the foreword to Happy Odyssey. A well-deserved retirement. 
After the mission to Chiang Kai-shek ended, Caton de Villa returned home and finally retired in October 1947 with the honorary rank of Lieutenant General, settling down in County Cork, Ireland. Having proved unkillable in both the First and Second World Wars, not to mention the other sundry conflicts he fought in, he passed at last in 1963 at the ripe old age of 83. Conclusion Caton de Villa was a larger-than-life figure who was known for his bravery, his wit and his resilience. He was also a controversial figure who was criticised for his recklessness and his willingness to take risks. Adrien Caton de Villa was a unique and extraordinary individual. His story is an inspiration as to what can still be achieved in life even after suffering debilitating wounds. He was a true survivor who lived a life that was full of adventure and excitement. He was also a complex and contradictory figure, but there is no doubt that he was one of the most remarkable soldiers of his generation. Outro Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed learning about the life of Adrien Caton de Villa. If you want to learn more about him, I recommend checking out the following resources. See you again soon.